So we're talking this morning about launching a team. We've got three goals for this didactic. One is to simply help people understand the anatomy of a team. What's the difference between a team and a group of individuals working toward a common goal? What exactly do teams do? Teams do? And what are the characteristics of a high-performing team? We want people to understand the stages of team development, and we want everyone to know how to launch a successful team. High-performing teams have a number of characteristics. One is that they've got a co-created goal, and I'm underscoring the co-created. Clearly defined accountabilities for each team member. A clear set of behavioral norms, rules of engagement. Equal commitment to both team success, getting the job done, and satisfaction. People want to work together again tomorrow. An agreed upon decision making process. A stance that takes an assertive problem solving approach to conflict. Regularly scheduled meetings a high level of trust, candor, and caring among team members, and a can-do attitude. There's a high degree of engagement that's born out of a commitment to both the project and each other. Just like humans go through developmental phases, so do teams. I'm going to focus on co-located teams today. The stages are forming, storming, norming, performing, and either end, the team disbands, or transforming. You know, often at the end of the year, team leadership turns over, so you transform into a new team. There are things that you do to help guide a team successfully through each of these stages. You'll notice that the first stage is forming. And that is why we're starting with a team launch. There are several steps to launching an effective team. One is team members get to know each other better. Two, the team's purpose is clarified. Three, the team has norms. Four, how decisions get made is agreed upon the team project is identified, team roles and responsibilities are defined, a communication plan is created, and a project plan including a timeline is created. So you might be wondering why we're spending all this time doing this. I can tell you after 25 years <laughs> This is one of the most important steps. It's either pay now or pay later. Building an effective foundation is as important as building a foundation on a house. Who here would want to build a house without having a solid foundation? The same thing happens with a team. Your team will not get to high performance if you don't take the time to actually launch and get the the team off the ground in a good way. The goal of this session is to prepare people to launch the team. Now it's going to feel like a play within a play. They're going to practice facilitating a team launch and it's going to be a pretend team launch. In the course of that though, they're going to get comfortable with the concept with facilitating a meeting as well as some of the tools that exist to help them launch their team. Now the session might seem complicated, there's a lot going on, but trust us, you're going to be okay and what you're going to find is that they're going to do the vast majority of the work and you're going to sit back and watch them. In terms of materials, you should have facilitator notes that you should be looking at right now, a mock team launch agenda, as well as various worksheets for different aspects of the meeting. We'll go over these in a second. So over the 95 minute session, you're going to first walk people through the agenda, showing them the different roles. They're then going to pick which role they're going to do and start quietly prepping for it for about 10 minutes. Then they're going to run the team launch mock meeting. You're going to be observing, keeping time, as well as noting what they're doing well and what they can improve upon. 
you'll then debrief the experience and help them think through how this might apply when they get home. So this is how the session will unfold. People will enter the room, do a quick check-in, and then make sure everyone's looking at the mock agenda as you run through it. You should make note of a few things. First of all, the color coding for different roles. Secondly, the difference between the mock time meeting, which we'll be using in the breakout session, and the real time required for each of these components when they do it for real. Finally, you should note the setup, the column for the what and the why of each section, as well as the how. Now the how section will have references to the appropriate worksheets. We'll show you this later. After going through the agenda, ask people to sign up for a role. Encourage them to be on their developmental edge. Here's what it can look like to both run through the agenda as well as get people to sign up for roles. Hey, welcome back everyone. That was a great session. So this is a, an action-packed um, breakout session. And there's a lot, so if it's okay, we're going to just dive right in. So what I want you to have in front of you is um, this multicolored mock agenda. I'll talk about that in a minute. So essentially what you're going to be doing is running a team launch. You guys are going to split it up and you're going to be facilitating the meeting. So we've got the mock agenda here. I'll walk you through that. After I walk you through, I'll give everybody 10 minutes to prepare for their session so you can just relax now and we'll go through. You're going to practice. You'll actually go through facilitating your meeting and then we'll debrief it. So not so complicated. So if you look at your mock agenda, let me just take you through how this is set up. You'll see a mock time and you'll see a real time. Mock time is the time we're going to use today. The real time is the time that you'll actually use when you go home and launch your team for real. There's a column that says what to do and why and how to do it. You'll also notice that there are different colors. You know, there are blue, peach, pink. Each of those sections is divided into, you know, seven to ten minute groupings. And that's simply so to make it easy for each of you to pick a session. Okay? So what I want to do is walk you through the agenda. And I'll ask that you hold your questions to the end because it'll probably make sense by the time we get to the end. Okay. So we'll go through the blue section first. So for one minute, simply going to welcome the group, state the purpose of this meeting is to get the team off to a good start and to select our team's uh, project. Brief welcome. And you'll just simply say this is the purpose. For the next four minutes, Notice very quick introduction, name, rank, serial number. We're doing that because later on in the agenda we're going to take a deeper dive so people can really get to know each other. You will see on the right, the next thing here is help participants get to know each other in a fun way. Select an icebreaker. If you'll look at your worksheets, you'll see one that says icebreaker and there's a whole bunch of different icebreakers. Who's ever doing this section? When you get to your prep time, you'll pick the one that you're gonna uh, you're gonna use for the mock team launch. For the next two minutes, you're simply gonna review the agenda, make sure everybody's clear on what the purpose of the meeting is. We're still in blue. For three minutes, you're gonna create norms. And the norms is really where you start to build a safe container for the team to do its work very important step. If you look in the right column in terms of how, there are two ways. One is you're going to brainstorm norms. If you refer to your worksheets, there is one on brainstorming. It'll take you through the instructions. There are several different brainstorming techniques. Round robin, for example, post-it note, you'll pick one. 
There is also a norms worksheet and the norms worksheet is just sort of a running tally that we've kept over the years that has very common no norms. So after the team brainstorms, there might be some on that list that they want to add. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so Blue is now going to pass the baton to Peach. So for the next 12 minutes, the team is going to take a deeper dive into getting to know each other. And they're going to do this by telling a story. Uh, you guys have already done the homework because you're here. You've learned how to tell story of self. Not everybody on your team when you go back is here. So they won't have had the opportunity to learn how to tell public narrative. So the how on this section is that you're going to model it for them by going first. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. As the person's telling their story, everyone's going to have post-it notes in front of them. And they're going to capture each value that they hear on a post-it note. So let me stop and talk about how this is, works because a lot of times people get it wrong. Okay. So I'm telling my story and you guys are all listening and a value that comes up is one of giving back. So what I would, each participant would do is write that value on one post-it note uh, and hang on to it for now. It seems simple but what people tend to do is put four or five different values on each on one post-it note and where we're going with this is we're going to sort them um, later on so we can create a picture. So it's important that it's one value per post-it note. Um, so after each person tells their story and each of you has written down your values, we'll collect them and I'll put them, I'll sort them and put them up on the flip chart. So let me spend a little bit more time on the how. Now when you actually go back to launch your team, everyone will take two minutes to tell their story. For the mock, we don't have time to do that, so I'm going to ask for a couple of volunteers, somebody who's willing to take their, tell their story. And notice that this time is only two minutes, so you're going to be challenged to tell a condensed version of your story. And there will be no extensions given, okay? Um, so any questions on that? No, it's okay. And this is a pretty rich exercise. So once you've got all the post-it notes sorted after everyone's told their story, you know, they're sorted, so you can say something like, so what values do you see that we share? And the picture has been painted. And the team will use that to guide its work as it goes forward. So peach person passes to pink. Um, and actually, the pink and the blue were arbitrarily split into two, simply to give each person about, you know, seven to ten minutes. So the first part is going to select a chapter project. So there'll be a list of PCP national projects that folks have done over the years and a brief description. So the group will start there but they'll also have an opportunity to brainstorm additional projects that they might want to do. So you'll start out with your list, get those up on the flip chart, and then you'll do a brainstorm. This is the second brainstorm, so whoever is doing this section, make sure you read brainstorming techniques and rules and choose the, t the technique you want to use. Once the brainstorm is complete and the ideas are written on the flip, you're going to pass the baton to turquoise. So in a sense, part A is diverging, thinking of all the different possibilities for projects. 
Part B is to converge and start to narrow down. And you'll use two different techniques to do this. One is a multi-vote. And if you'll look in your worksheet called decision making, you'll see directions on how to multi-vote. So that sort of narrows the list down by a third. The second decision making um, technique you're going to use is reaching consensus. Um, now, this is important too, because sometimes it takes a while before people can get to consensus. I don't know how your friends are, but, but my friends, even saying something like, what movie do we want to reach could take a week, uh, depending upon how opinionated people are and how strongly they feel. Do not rush this step. This is where you need to get buy-in. And if people acquiesce just to check off the box, you're not going to have engagement later on. You may not get to consensus even in the mock. That's OK. What you would do is say, listen, doesn't look like we're going to finish this today. Let's park this, and we'll pick it up at our next meeting. Baton gets passed to green to cover team logistics. And there's a worksheet for the team logistics. You want to make sure that your team uh, maps these out for the semester, at least. Then you're going to identify roles and responsibilities. At a minimum, the roles that we are recommending are a facilitator, a note taker, and a timekeeper. The team needs to decide how they're going to manage these roles. Each time you meet, are you going to uh, share facilitation? Um, one leader um, shares the facilitation for an entire meeting. You can do it like we're doing it here, where each person takes a section. Some teams have a facilitator for you know a month or two months. No right or wrong. What's important is the team talk about it. Baton gets passed to the purple person. And their goal is to put together the communication plan. And there's a communication planning worksheet. And you'll notice that there are two parts to the plan. One is internal communication amongst each other. And the other is for people that the team really needs to keep on board as you're doing your work. Last step is wrap up. Next steps. Um, there's an action planning worksheet that's got the who, the what, and the when. I don't know about you folks, but I can't remember what I did an hour ago, never mind uh, looking a month down the road. Because all of you are so busy, what we have found works best is for the team to actually take a few minutes at the end of a meeting to plan the agenda for the next meeting. Then it's done, nobody's got to worry. Select a date if you haven't already done so, and identify who's going to facilitate the next meeting. Voila, <laughs> team launched. <laughs> so, any additional questions? No, it's very clear. Okay, great. So, who is going to do what section? Who wants blue? I'll do blue. Peach? Yay. I really want to encourage people to be on their developmental edge, you know, take some risks here. Pink? I'll do that. Great, Dana. Each person now gets 10 minutes to quietly prepare for their role. You should encourage them to read all the material that exists to help prepare them. The what and the why, the how, as well as the accompanying worksheets. They should also make decisions on the different activities that they're going to use in their section. While they're doing this, you should quietly circulate around and answer any questions that come up in their respective roles. Now, right before you launch the mock team meeting, ask for any further clarification questions about how it's going to run. Then, tell people to relax, have fun. If they get stuck, ask for a consult. And then, you should press the timer and note that you're going to be observing and helping keep them on time.
So your team is going to now dive in. Each person is going to adopt their role and then pass the baton. And your role now is observing, keeping track of time, and for each person as they go through their role, noting one strength as well as one area for improvement. If someone gets stuck and asks for a consult, help out, but then back off. Time's up after 55 minutes. If the mock meeting is still going, you got to cut it off. Now it's time to do the debrief of that mock meeting. Try and go from general to specific. Ask questions like, what was it like in general? Then get a little bit more specific. What was it like being a participant in a meeting like this? What was it like being a facilitator? Then ask people to go around and say one thing that they were pleased with that they did. Now the tendency is going to be for folks to go through the laundry list of all the different ways that they effed up. Don't let them do that. Encourage them to focus on one thing that they did well. Here's what that debrief might look like. So I just want to hear from the group around just what in general was it like facilitating a mock um, team launch? You know, what, what did you find easy? What did you find more difficult? Just in general. I think it went really, really fast. Mm -hmm. But it was um, easy to follow the agenda. It really told me what to do. Great. Others? There's a lot in there that I just never thought about. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like I thought brainstorming was the universal technique. Um, so it was, it was nice to see and I had no idea that there are so many other options. Mm -hmm. Great. I discovered that it's much harder to run a meeting than I originally thought, but having all these tools and techniques to make meetings more um, efficient and effective, it's really awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, along with that, uh, I really liked the icebreaker ideas. There are so many options there. Yeah, so they can really be fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, great. So let's focus on each one of you now. You know, I want you to think about your experience uh, facilitating your 10 minute section. And first, what I'd like to hear is one thing that you were pleased with, one thing you thought you did effectively. You know, I'm, I'm proud I got through it, and uh, the icebreaker went really well. People really got into it. Good, good. So you'll keep that one. Mm -hmm. um, Others? I managed to get my section done in the time allotted. Okay. I found the multi-voting technique to be very effective, and it was awesome that it didn't take us hours to reach a consensus, so I like that. Good. You know, I just don't think mine that went that well. Um, I really messed it up. I couldn't get anything done in time, so... Okay, Dana, I'm going to stop you. You've got a well-developed internal critic, so I'm going to ask you to put that aside for a minute and think about one thing, just one thing that you thought you did effectively. I guess I engaged people. I mean, they seemed to be having fun, so that was probably good. Don't minimize that. That's important. Great. Mm -hmm. So the goal is for you to go back and actually do this team launch. So I'd like to hear from each of you now about, you know, one thing you'd like to do to up your game uh, when you go back. Just one thing. This is the case that less is more. I mean, I think mine would have to be sticking to the time schedule and making sure we stay on that. Okay, great. I'd like to practice being more comfortable and confident and really owning the facilitator role. Good. Uh, I want to be more physically engaged, mm -hmm. um, so just like more open and present. Mm -hmm. Great. You know, I think I'd use the silent voting brainstorm activity to get the quiet people engaged. Okay, yes, and I really want you to just encourage you to try different techniques to see what works for you and what works for the group. Sure. So, nice work. Now it's time for the overall closing of this session. Note that unless their entire leadership team and faculty advisor were in that room, they're going to have to run this team launch meeting when they get home. Note that the team launch took 55 minutes in this pretend meeting, but the actual one takes around three hours. Now that's a lot of time, but real team launches sometimes take up a, to a day. So this is really a compressed activity that we're doing. Encourage people to take the time to do this it will pay off in dividends in terms of their team effectiveness. 
then ask people what questions they have about running this type of a meeting when they get home. Finally, give folks the opportunity to report out one takeaway that they have about team launch meetings. Then close out the session. Nice job. You got through your team launch breakout session, which is a pretty long session.